Hello, my fellow builders. Today I want to talk with you about the new enterprise controls for AWS Certificate Manager to help govern certificate issuance. Many customers are concerned with how to ensure that TLS certificates are issued in accordance with their organizational governance guidelines. Common examples of such policies include requiring specific validation types during certificate issuance, restricting the ability to issue certificates with wildcard names, and requiring that certificates use a specific key algorithm like ECDSA. Prior to this release, there was no straightforward way to enforce such governance rules for AWS Certificate Manager, also known as ACM. Now, you can define granular rules around certificate issuance from ACM and ensure your users are using TLS in accordance with your governance policies. So what's new? Let's take a look. You can now use AWS Identity and Access Management, or IM, condition context keys with ACM to help ensure that users are issuing certificates that conform to your organization's public key infrastructure guidelines. Using these new condition keys, you can define how your ACM users customize certificate issuance parameters to authorize Number one, a specific certificate validation method. Number two, who can request certificates for specific domain names, including wildcard names. Number three, specific certificate key algorithms. Number four, the request of public or private certificate types. And number five, disabling certificate transparency logging. You can allow or deny specific certificate issuance parameters in your IAM principles. Just add the condition using the specific condition context key to the identity-based policy for your IAM role or user, or to a service control policy, otherwise known as SCP, within AWS organizations. How does this work in detail? Let's review how condition context keys work so that we can understand how to use them for ACM. The condition block of an AWS IAM policy lets you specify conditions for when a policy is in effect. If you want to apply a policy condition on a username John Doe, then a condition block in the JSON form would look like this, where AWS username is the condition key. The AWS prefix tells you that this is a global condition key that is applicable to virtually any service. This condition is true if AWS username string equals John Doe. If true, then the rest of the AWS IAM policy applies, allow or deny, on whatever actions and resources are specified. What if you want to apply multiple conditions to a policy? This diagram illustrates the evaluation logic for condition element blocks. Note that multiple context key value pairs are evaluated with a logical AND. This will be important later in the demo. Multiple key values like AWS username, John Doe, in the previous example are evaluated with a logical OR. Multiple condition operators like string equals in the previous example evaluate with a logical AND. Here are the details of the new ACM condition context keys. Notice the ACM prefix on all of these condition keys, which tell you that they are specific to ACM. In this demonstration, we will focus on the first condition context key, ACM validation method, which filters access by the validation method in the request, such as email or DNS validation. For more information on the others, consult the AWS documentation. In this demonstration, we will create an SCP to enforce governance with the ACM condition context key. With AWS organizations to manage permissions across your or enterprise, SCPs offer central control over the maximum available permission for all accounts in your organization, and SCPs can help you ensure your accounts stay aligned with your organization's access control guidelines. This diagram illustrates SCP inheritance and how an SCP denying an action or service effect in the targeted account is inherited downward from the higher account. 
let us assume that you want to allow only DNS validated certificates, not email validated certificates across your entire enterprise. You could create IAM policies in all of your accounts to deny the use of email validated certificates, but creating an SCP that denies the use of email validation across every account in your enterprise will be much more efficient and effective. However, if you want to prevent a single IAM role in one of your accounts from issuing email validated certificates, the IAM policy attached to that role would be the simplest, most granular method. It's important to note that no permissions are granted by an SCP. An SCP sets limits on the actions that you can delegate to the IAM user and roles in the affected accounts. Let's focus on our specific condition context key to prohibit the use of email validation during certificate issuance. The SCP will look like this. This SCP has the effect of deny action of ACM request certificate for any resource denoted by the star. The condition block matches string like ACM validation method equal to email. The second condition provides an exception for a specific IAM role that may be allowed to use email validation. The ARN not like condition coupled with the deny effectively means deny if the principal ARN is not the one specified. Recall the multiple condition context key value pairs are evaluated with a logical AND. Both of the two conditions must evaluate to true for the deny to take place. So let's go see this in action and get to our demo. We've set up a very simplistic website to demonstrate this. Notice when we try to access it using a friendly DNS name, we get a certificate warning because the name associated with the certificate is different from the DNS name. Now we log into the console as admin of the organization and we navigate to organizations, policies, security control policies, and you see I've pre-built our policy which is previously discussed to deny email validation. We now attach this to the root of the organization and now all principles in the organization will have this effect. Now, as a DevSecOps role in the production account where the website is built, we navigate to Certificate Manager. We go to Request a Certificate. We choose a public certificate. Hit Next. Then we add the domain name of the website, and we're going to check email validation and we can leave the other parameters as is. We go to Request. We see at the very top of the screen that it has failed, and this is because our SCP has blocked this. Now, if we go back and we select DNS validated and hit Next, then we see that the request was successful. So if we view the certificate, we see that it is in a pending validation status. This is for the DNS validation. Once that's done, we'll be able to apply the cert. Our DNS administrator has added the CNAME records for the DNS validation. And now we refresh and we see that the status of the cert is issued. We can now start using the cert. So we take the issued certificate, we add it to the website, and voila, we no longer get a certificate warning with the website, and we are complete. Let's review what we've gone over. Number one, we saw the five new condition keys for ACM. Number two, we saw how the new keys help govern certificate issuance in the ACM. Number three, we saw an example SCP to deny the use of email validation during certificate issuance. And finally, we saw a demonstration of that SCP to prevent the issuing of an email validated certificate while successfully issuing a DNS validated certificate to fix our website. I thank you so much for your time and attention. I hope you learned something valuable here. Happy building on AWS.